Welcome to today's Big Idea Show. I'm here with Britt Wyatt. Hello. Hello. <laughs> we are here today, to, aren't we, to talk about, under the theme of leadership, how you go from being, well, a hobbyist to an influencer, to a leader in your industry. Yes. We're going to be back after these titles. <laughs> Welcome to the hot seat. Thank you very much for having me. It's great to have you on. Um, hot off your TEDx Folkestone talk. Yes. A few weeks back. Um, and it's great to get the opportunity to talk to you a little bit more in depth about the other bits you do. Yes. Because you, you touch briefly, don't you, on your talk about what you do. Yeah. But it's not the kind of main message behind it, is it? No, no. So that's why I wanted to hear a little bit more because there's a lot you do, isn't there? There is. It's hard to, to just put a finger on it, to be honest. Yeah. But yes, no, there's lots of lots of different facets to, uh, to my day-to-day -day life. Okay. <laughs> do you want to give us a very brief overview of kind of what you do, how you describe yourself? In yeah. A, in a, I was going to say in a tweet, but maybe that's a bit mean. That's uh, a bit hard. <laughs> in 100, oh, is it not, not 100, it's not 108 characters anymore, is it? It's something it's else. Than, but 255, yeah. I think. Um, I am a writer. Mm -hmm. um, I am a baker. I'm a blogger. Um, I, what else? I don't really know. It's it's really difficult. It's like everything I do revolves around um, my blog and f have from ha comes from having my blog, mm -hmm. but it's not all specifically blogging. Yeah. Um, as well, I also um, do blogging consultations with people who have small to medium businesses, mm -hmm. and I provide one on one um, sort of tuition to help them come up with blogs to enhance their digital marketing. Mm -hmm. I also teach blogging workshops. I also yeah. teach cake decorating workshops. Yeah. I also write for cake magazines. Um, I'm an author of my own book um, and do lots of other bits as well. And I write recipes for brands and corporations. So okay. literally every day is different. And I yeah. love that because I have a very short attention span. <laughs> so I need I need the variety. Yeah. Um, but it all kind of falls under the, the She Who Bakes umbrella, basically. Okay. Yeah, awesome. So I guess when we get into our conversation, I, you've got almost two hats. You influence them in two camps, eh? in the baking, yeah. but be also influencing people in how to do what you've done, which is take that idea from something that you, you started because you enjoyed it yeah. and then turned it into a profession and something that you can do every yeah. day. Yeah, something like that, yeah. Okay, but before we go into any of that, we're gonna go for the fun bit, which is a quick fire question. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna throw these I at I don't you. know how good I, I'm gonna be at this, but okay, yeah. Yeah, you could, if, if you really don't know, because sometimes my quick fire questions are a bit random. Okay. Okay, uh, first animal that comes to mind when I say leader. Lion. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, most important quality in a leader? Listening. I'm not I'm not purposely giving all these L's, by the way. It's just... Are you just set like yeah. Everything's got to be given L now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You set yourself a hard <laughs> challenge. Okay. First leader in history that comes to mind? Steve Jobs. <laughs> Which I know he's not, but that's just... I just... Because I can see your Apple computer from here. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for him from yeah, no, around I'm the room. <laughs> okay. Uh, most inspiring leader you've had, like, personally, who's led you? Um... My fiance Tim. Oh. Hundred percent. Very sweet. Yeah. With he's one of the most inspiring people I've ever met. Oh. We said we'd get him in somehow, yeah. didn't we? <laughs> yeah. Thankfully it's not him kind of like butting in. It's in well, a positive way. I kind of think with, with a leader it's kind of the person who can help you be better mm. and he makes me a better person. So. Awesome. That's yeah. really cool. <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to get him in at the end. Yeah, yeah. Quick, Say hello. <laughs> okay. Uh, what would your brave heart war cry be? Oh, Probably so really like hard. a Shakira song. <laughs> <laughs> what, just Shakira, Shakira? Yeah, Shakira, Shakira. <laughs> that would be it. Just me shouting oh. Shakira, Shakira. What, there was the football one that she does, which is like Waka Waka. Waka Waka, waka eh, eh, eh. Yeah, we're not doing it justice, but yeah, it's a good song. And this is the first um, time we've, I've sung on this show. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, probably, probably just shouting Shakira on a field <laughs> somewhere. That's what I would do. Because okay. <laughs> it would confuse the enemy. It would. And then if you confuse people, you're more likely to, to get around them, yeah. I think. They'd go, where, where? Where is she? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Ha ha. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> lead from the back or lead from the front? Lead from the back. Only because a, a diagram is coming to my mind from, um, it's like a diagram of these animals like going through the the thing and like the leader is always at the back to make sure that nobody gets left behind is it the wolves it might be the wolves yes, yes. i think i uh, yeah, yeah yes so exactly. that's the first thing that came to mind when you said that okay cool uh biggest leadership challenge <sighs> not turning into a dictator okay 
Hmm. So we can say something else. No. <laughs> but you finish that. It's exciting. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And um, best feeling being a leader. Success, I would say, because yeah. if you if you lead people into good things, then it's success for them, which makes success for you. Success all around. Awesome. I like it. There we go. We survived the quick fire questions. Yes, and they didn't all begin with L, so. <laughs> right, sorry, we're doing them again. That, that's not the rules. It's got to be out there. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, right, let's go into um, your story a bit, shall we? Okay. Can you tell me, for those that don't know, Yes. kind of, yeah, where did you go from, how did you go from being you doing it yeah. and... I guess those will say we'll preclude this with watch the TEDx talk, and then you'll watch see how you got to the stage of starting. Yes, the baking. Mm. But it was if we start from there. Yeah. To then becoming the influencer that you are. Okay. Um, well, obviously, the sort of my, my uh, very Marvel comic book origin story is in is in my TEDx talk, if you will. But once I'd started the baking, um, I just I really enjoyed it and it made me feel good. Mm. So I wanted to keep doing it and I wanted to keep keep baking. And I was just using packet mixes at the time because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, so then once I started using like actual recipes mm -hmm. um, and coming up with my own sort of things. I was writing about it constantly because I, first and foremost, am a writer and a mm -hmm. blogger. I always have been. And my original blog that was just a lifestyle blog was called Fortune Sides with She Who Dares. Yeah. So when I started baking, it didn't take a large leap of the imagination <laughs> to call it She Who Bakes. And um, so I was writing about it alongside it. Yeah. And... People, what were you writing? I was writing about how someone who doesn't know how to bake <laughs> <laughs> is starting to learn how to bake. Okay. Um, and, and I was... And was that for you or was that... It was 100% for me. It was 100% okay. for me. Like, my blog was private for the first year of its existence. Yeah. Um, and then when I made it public, I remember being really excited that I got my third follower. Oh. Um, and, like, one of them was the, the one that they give you when you set up the oh. when you set up the blog. And I was like, oh, my God, there's, there's actually people out there reading what I do. Yeah. And then I started uh, like a Facebook page to go alongside it to obviously have a way to promote the, the blogs that I was writing. And I was I was writing things like I was just reviewing things. So I reviewed a packet mix. Mm -hmm. I reviewed um, a type of icing from yeah. from a well-known supermarket. And I was just writing about it on my blog and posting it on a Facebook page that didn't really have a lot of people on it. And then the review I did of the icing that was from a supermarket, I tweeted my blog to them because mm -hmm. I was like, well, they might like to know it, what a, an actual home baker thinks of it rather than just the people they get to product test mm -hmm. it. Um, and they then replied to me a few days later asking if I'd like to be one of their official food bloggers. Nice. Um, yeah, and I remember it and it was amazing. And I was like, oh my God, yes. And that what that entailed really was going to their food events that mm -hmm. were twice a year, writing about them and every so often getting sent um, like gift cards to make something mm -hmm. with a product that they wanted to promote yeah basically um, and I was I just felt really excited because I was like it felt to me like people were actually interested in what I had to say which mm. was which was mad for me I was like yeah. oh my god and then I'll never forget the first time that I went to an event it was one of their food events and I had a like a press pass <laughs> amazing and People wanted to talk to me um, and wanted to hear my opinion because I had this little special badge mm. on and and I was so excited. And that was like the first like major thing that I did. And I was like, oh my God, this is great. Yeah. So I just, I kept doing that. I kept writing about things. And at the time I was making commission cakes for people. So I was making like birthday cakes and christening cakes. And what I was doing is whenever I was making them, if I was doing something different, I would take step-by-step -step photos mm -hmm. and turn them into like a little tutorial. Yeah. Um, because I was teaching myself as well at the end of the day. And I kind of thought you see all of these blogs and you see all of these magazines of these people who are like perfect and amazing and everything, not unlike women's magazines, like in that respect, but you don't ever see sort of the real side of it. Yeah. So I would write about everything. I'd write about everything I'd messed up. Mm -hmm. I'd write about every time I tried something and it didn't work. Um, and I would also write about the times when I tried stuff and it did work, you know? So yeah. I was, I just kept it very real. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what people were interested in. Yep. Because there are so many people that mess things up and think, we, oh, this obviously isn't for me then. This, I, I won't do this anymore because I, I messed up. This obviously wasn't for me. So I wanted to just be as real as I could be because that's kind of who I am. And that's what mm. my lifestyle blog was about. It was about just getting by day to day, you know, whereas this time it had 
like a point to it, if that makes sense. And I would make these tutorials and I would post them. And then the more I was doing, and then I started creating my own recipes and they went on there as well. And that was just all trial by error, I assume, uh, you know, I assure you. (laughs) Were there some awesomely awful ones on there? God, yeah, there's some some pictures on there that are fun, (laughs) that are good. Um, And just the more I wrote about it, the more people were interested in it. Mm -hmm. And then my Facebook page sort of started to grow. My readership started to grow. Mm -hmm. And then because I was then getting the numbers of the audience behind me, I then had more brands contacting me and magazines contacting me, asking me to work with them. And then it kind of snowballed. And then I had to stop taking commission cake orders in 2015 Mm -hmm. because the other side of it basically took over. Yeah. Um, And then that's when I started teaching cake decorating classes. And it just just kind of snowballed, really. But just from constantly doing it, and not stopping or mm. giving up. Like, I do see people for, for blogging now, and I will only see people, really, who, who are blogging for business, so who aren't the people I was when I started, because I was just blogging as a hobby. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's that thing, you know, people say to me, well, how did you make it a job? It's like, because I worked really hard at it for a really yeah. long time. So what, so guys, what was the time? You said you were doing it for a year before you actually published anything yes so what's the time scale and how much did you work on it like as an approximation of how much your day or week you spent on it so yeah so I I I first published it in January 2013 Mm -hmm. I'd been writing it for like a year before that but I I published it in January 2013 and I was doing at least one to two blogs a week Mm -hmm. um and was sort of like planning everything around those all Mm. while sort of doing a full-time job and and, Mm. and doing everything else as well um and just and just writing a lot yeah. Just, just constantly writing. Basically, yeah. everything was an idea for a for a blog. Mm-hmm. You know, it was all kind of, well, how can I turn that into a blog post? Yeah. And it was, and I just kept doing it. So, and then, so that's January 2013. And the first, when I got my first press pass for something, that was kind of late in 2014. Mm-hmm. So I was doing it for a good, essentially three years before anyone noticed what I was doing yeah. really yeah so how many blog posts would you did you have up before that company the supermarket went actually will you do some more Pro- you must have had a good way yeah, probably you probably to be able to probably about maybe 60 yeah. I don't know but each each post because it was slightly different to how I do it now mm-hmm. it was um some posts were just pictures of cake I'd made cakes I'd made that week you yeah. know, with a bit of a description about what I'd made that week. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so quite a lot. Yeah. <laughs> really. And how did it, I guess, once you reach that point where it just tips over and mm. like you, did, you get that first thing and then the audience starts to build and because the audience is building more people, it's easier for them to get on board, as yep. it were. Because they're like, oh, she must be someone who knows what she's talking about. How was it for you? <laughs> how in wrong they are. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> be full by <laughs> um, but that period before where you knew you wanted to do it mm. but before you knew if it was going to be anything or essentially whether it was going to work in a that you could make something of it I was kind of forced into it through redundancy though and it was just uh it was a good few years, you know, of just hard graft, mm. really, of sort of making it a thing. And that's why I think it's really good to do something that's the same um, industry alongside it. Mm-hmm. So, obviously, I was making cakes for people. So, that was kind of, that was my job. Yeah. And then I was blogging about making cakes for people. Mm. And then it just got to the point where the blog took over. Yeah. Um, so, I had, so something had to give. Yeah. Because, like, making a cake, people don't realise how long it takes. Like just a wedding cake alone is a good sort of sixty hours work sometimes, wow. and it's yeah. Okay, I didn't realise it was that long. Like there's there's a lot, you know, if you're doing like a four or five tier wedding cake that's mm. really intricately detailed, it's like you know it's it's a four weeks work and people don't realise that. Yeah. So it was a case of I couldn't I couldn't commit the time to still to making cakes for people and to to be doing my writing. Yeah. So um, but like I say, so the blog went public in January 2013, and I stopped making commission cakes. Uh, late 2015 mm-hmm. so yeah so sort of near three years of doing yeah. it before I stopped doing the alongside job yeah and was that a planned thing was it right when I get to this stage I'm gonna quit or was no, it no it organic? just became too much mm. it just became too much I can remember um doing all the the brand work that I had to do and teaching cake decorating classes and doing you know xyz and doing just loads of other things and then realizing as well I still had to spend 30 hours making someone's birthday cake and I was like Mm. I just can't do it it just the time it took 
compared to sort of the other things I had to do, it just became sort of less of a priority. And also I started to enjoy it slightly less mm -hmm. because when it's that thing, isn't it? Something's really, really fun. And then you're, you're doing it all the time, every day. And it mm. just kind of sometimes becomes a little bit monotonous. Yeah. Um, so I just had to have a break from it. Yeah. So did, um, in terms of making it something that, you know, you can make a living from and you can do it in your full time, you can spend your time doing it. Mm. Did it because obviously baking stuff for, for other people, there's yeah. a more tangible, right? They'll, they'll pay you to do a cake. Did you, when you made that jump, were you in a position where the blog was sustaining itself or did you have to make that, right, I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm going to take the leap because I believe it's going to be worth it in the long run. Yeah. Well, it's, it's really difficult to explain in the sense that some people assume that to to run a blog and to have that as, as a job, that for every blog I type and press send, money comes into my <laughs> yeah, account. Yeah, yeah. And that's 100% not how it <laughs> yeah. works, like at all. Mm. Yes, you can have advertisement on your website. Mm. I personally don't have any sort of adverts or like roller banners or anything mm. on my website because I don't like how they look. Yeah. So what mine is, is it's through um, ad, like sponsor, sponsored ads, mm. like sponsored partnerships. Yeah. Um, and then obviously writing for other people and things like that. But it all comes through my blog. So I wouldn't have have any of it if it wasn't for the blog itself yeah but blogging doesn't make you money mm. do you know what I mean you have to have all of the stuff to back you up yeah which is why in sort of consultations when I see people one-to-one -one, mm. I don't see hobby bloggers that want to be mm. professional bloggers because even as someone who does it I'm like it's not a job yeah do you know what I mean you have to you have to find sort of things around it. Like I've got online cake decorating courses on my website, mm -hmm. but people wouldn't have found those if they weren't reading my blog, if that makes yeah. sense. But everything was kind of self, like self-sustaining itself mm -hmm. and the money, because when you make cakes for people, there's not a lot of money in it. Mm. There's really, really not. Unless you're making cakes full time and you're doing six or seven cakes a week, it's really hard to make a sustainable full-time wage from it. Mm. So considering I wasn't making seven cakes a week, because I was so busy, I was m maximum doing one. And it was kind of taking more time for less money. Mm. So everything else had already started to take over and, and the cakes were just kind of an extra thing I was doing. Mm. Um, but like I say, they were, the, they were the thing that took the most amount of time and gave me the sort of almost least amount of revenue. So that was the thing that had to go. Yeah. Um, but if I, when, I was, when I was doing them full-time and doing sort of seven cakes a week or doing a couple of wedding cakes a month mm. yeah you can you can make a, a great living from it but I just didn't have the time to commit to it mm. and it was kind of I had to decide what I wanted to do yeah. more of the writing or commission cakes for people yeah. so I chose the writing yeah, yeah good <laughs> okay and okay so let's go to back to kind of the becoming an influencer I hate that word I so know. much <laughs> and we couldn't think of a better word no <laughs> because everyone knows what that means but I, I get yeah. what you mean about it yeah, because you're doing you're doing it because it's always been a passion, right? Rather yeah. than yeah, I'm doing it because it's fun and because I like it. Mm. And um, yeah, I think because because there's a lot of people that the word just gets banded about yeah. quite a lot. Don't get me wrong. When I was when I was starting out and when I kind of thought you know uh, the term a key person of influence was something I knew of sort of in networking and mm -hmm. and when I would hear people talk and listen to TED talks and stuff like that, it's something I would hear a lot. And that's obviously now just over the years been sort of shortened and shortened and shortened to just become influencer. Mm. And it's it's one of those things. It's I don't really know what it means. I think that's the that's the main problem. It's like okay, yeah. influencing what? Influencing yeah. who? Like. Mm. I think I write about I write about things that I'm passionate about. I won't write about things that I'm not. I've had I get a, I get so many people and brands and companies approach me and say, right, can you promote this? Can you promote this? But if it's something I don't actually use in my day to day life, I won't promote mm. it. Whereas I think that's where the line is. So there are people that that will call themselves influencers and will take sort of every sponsored ad and you know cool by all means you know live yeah. your best life I'm not here to criticize anyone you do what mm. you want to do but that's why I don't necessarily see myself in that way I just see me as someone who um just does just is living like mm. I don't it's like there is there are certain words and phrases that people have said to me that not make me so not make me cringe a little bit but it's just it's like that oh because yeah. it's like and it's only because I think well, no, I'm not. I'm just, yeah. I'm just a normal girl, just trying yeah, to have yeah. a bit of fun. <laughs> so I don't know, but yes, it is a term that everyone knows, yeah. and it is kind of. Well, also, surely it makes you, I don't know, from whatever the core of that word that we really mean, rather than what it's become yeah. to mean. Surely you, that makes you more of it because you, for me, the word influence just means. I think some people see it as you, you influence people, but mm. I see it as no, you, you have an audience mm. that you've created, and you influence them, and almost. 
you you have influence over a big group of people because yeah. you've built an audience that trusts you because you don't shove yeah, yeah. products in their face that yeah, don't yeah. relate. You only give them stuff that you would use, therefore yeah. you think they might use. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's kind of, no, I, I, agree with, I agree with the way that, that you've said it. I think it might just be me. You know that sometimes when you get like a negative connotation of a word in your head and, oh, and it's kind of like, oh no. <laughs> totally, I'm totally yeah. with you. There's like certain words that people have described and I'm like, oh, it just feels... Weird. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you find that word and you're like... Because it's also... Oh, it's yeah. also, I'll tell you what it is. It's a bit of... I hear the word and in my head it's like, who she thinks she is? You know, it's it's a little bit of that. It's like imposter syndrome. Yeah. yeah. Oh, 100%. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so this is going to be a hard question, but why do you think you've become an influencer? What do you think has put you as someone that people trust and listen to? I have no idea. No, I, I don't know. I think, I think because... I've been real about it because mm -hmm. I've been I've been very much like yeah we all have we all have bad days and mm -hmm. I think because I've not made any secret about my mental health mm -hmm. I've not made any secret of the fact that I am a hobby baker mm -hmm. that got a little bit lucky and put a bit of work into it and I think I think that that you should definitely pump up the but you put a lot of work yeah into I did it. I did put it's I did put a lot of work into work into it I practice every day and therefore I get very lucky right? yes yeah the the harder I work the luckier I seem to get yeah. as Peter Dinklage said um, it's I think it is that I think it's just because I, I have been really real with it and I have I've not just shown the good side of it I've shown the rough side of it as well like in my book my I when I started because I've my book is about how to start a cake business from home and I was very adamant mm -hmm. that on nearly every page I wanted to put people off running a cake business <laughs> not in a bad <laughs> way amazing. but in a because it's so much harder than people think it is yeah. it's so much more expensive than people think it is and there's so much more you have to think about mm -hmm. so in every page like I was like yeah if you don't you know if you don't say that you're self-employed you can go to jail like mm. you probably you know you might not but you know you, like you might be able to if you aren't you know health and safety registered you can get fined up to a thousand pounds I was really sort of mm. telling the worst case scenario because people just go oh I like making cakes mm. I'll do it I'll just do it on the side as a bit of fun. and it's yeah. I wanted to be really real about it and about how there will be days where you will be screaming and shouting at, at, at an inanimate object because it's not doing what you you told it to do and that's okay mm. you don't have to be Martha Stewart or Mary Berry every mm. single day and I think I think that's maybe that's why people related to me because yeah. I was very very open about like baking in relation to my mental health mm -hmm. and I was very open about yeah, you're going to have really bad days, but it's okay because you'll have really good ones too. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. This is awesome. <laughs> awesome. So what's next? I guess and not just what's next for you, but yeah. what would you love? Maybe I'll ask that question more specifically, that yeah. you, what you influence you'd like to have over your audience or you'd like them to do, and as a result, you, you're going to do X, Y, or Z. I don't know. I mean, to be honest, I've spent half of this year building up to my TEDx talk and I haven't really sorry about that I haven't <laughs> and I haven't it was fun but but very stressful and I hadn't really thought past that okay. and I'm getting married in five weeks so I'm also very much like oh there's something happening after September oh I don't <laughs> it's kind of this year has been a bit like that I had TEDx and I had my 30th and I had a, a, the show I was doing in June so I couldn't think past that once I got past that I had a little bit of breathing space in mm -hmm. July and then all of this month I'm just thinking about the wedding so I'm kind of a bit like until I get to the end of this year yeah. I've no idea I'm just coasting now <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> I've had a really stressful <laughs> few months and I'm just enjoying a bit of downtime that's good. I that's think good. that's kind of okay. but more writing and um working with brands because I, yeah. I love working with brands and I've signed a, I've signed a contract to work with with someone else uh, that's that's coming up that I've got to do some bits for and it's and I, I really enjoy that side of mm. it I really enjoy that side of it and and uh, write more books really is yeah. something I'd, I'd quite like to do uh, yeah. as well so yeah do, do you get much from your audience them going do you uh, is in do you see patterns in what they're asking for what they're how they're behaving or or things yeah that they directly it's really funny are, so are wanting you to do nearly every other question I get is have you got a recipe book mm. uh, which I do not and every time I, I reply to them say all of my recipes are available for free on my website because I'm you know a good human and and I, you know, you'd think that that's what people want, but they don't. They would, they would pay for the convenience of having mm. it sort of all in one concise book. So that was something that I thought about doing before I started the business 
side the business book but because there are so many recipe books out there it's really hard to sort of stand out i mean mm. once you've made one victoria sponge you've made them all haven't you <laughs> and there's only so many different chocolate bars you can put in a cake and call it a new recipe yeah so whereas i was very much like whereas the business side of it not that people have written about it obviously but not a lot have so i kind of went down that route yeah so that is something that a lot of people ask from me but i don't think it's something that i'm necessarily gonna do yeah because it's i just feel a bit i feel like it's 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 been done so many times by people yeah. who are much, much better than me. <laughs> so, but where's the balance in this? And we're kind of going off on a tangent. Yeah, no, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> where's the balance then for you between um, doing like you've got to? I, I believe you've got to follow your passion, and this mm. is how you've got to where you are because yes. you've done what you believe is right for your audience, but also you've got to be true to yourself. Yeah. So you know, for you, a recipe book isn't as exciting as potentially other things. Yeah but it's what your audience is potentially asking for, some of them. Yeah. Where's that balance between giving them kind of what they want, yeah. which is you, everyone goes listen to your audience, yeah. but also if, it, if something's saying to you, no, that's not in the right thing for me. Mm. I tell you right now, if a publisher knocked on my door or mm. called me and said, let's make a recipe book, mm. I would do it. Mm. But I'm not going to do it myself yeah, but, yeah, yeah i'm not i'm not well yeah i'm not gonna i'm not gonna self-publish one yeah if if a company wanted to work with me and wanted to you know wanted to make a recipe book and because you know the audience is out there for it then mm. then i'd jump on it i'd be yeah. like yep yeah, cool let's do it but i wouldn't like i say necessarily make one myself because okay. my my book about business started out as an ebook mm -hmm. that i wrote i edited i made into a pdf document and i put on my website mm -hmm. and then a publishing company said do you want to make that into a real book? And I was like, yes. So I hid myself away for three months and I wrote and wrote and wrote and I put my soul in those pages and mm. I'm really, really proud of it. Um, and then, yeah, I did it. But if you'd had asked me, you know, oh, your, your business book, will you turn that into a book one day? Mm. I'd probably be sitting here saying the same thing I'm saying about a recipe book. Yeah. So it's like, I would do it if there was kind of like a reason yeah. to do it, if that the, makes if sense. If the audience want it enough to... Or a publisher wants it, knows that there's an audience enough yeah. to justify the effort that goes in. Exactly, it, yeah, because yeah. okay. it would be it would be a lot of effort. This is the thing; it would be a lot of because it, it would have to be all sort of new stuff, all different stuff, and yeah. recipe development takes like mm -hmm. takes a lot of time and, and is a lot of trial and error. And like I say, there have been more disasters in my kitchen than than possible successes. So it would, but yeah, if if can you do a book on all the ones that went wrong, <laughs> like your worst cakes, kind of like a, a toilet book that's just <laughs> laugh, like your square pudsy. Yeah. But oh, bless him. He was he was good he fun. Was good. He he's was on good. The front, he right? is. Yeah. He's he's the star of the show. Um, but well, uh, yeah. ten, uh, ten worst cakes. Well, there's a there's a then. show there's a show on Netflix now called Nailed It, which is literally about that. It's about people who can't bake. Apparently, my friend Colin told me to watch it, yeah, right. so I haven't seen it yet. So yeah, never know. I might do one of those instead. Yeah, <laughs> I'd get one of those. That'd be a good laugh. But it's been absolutely awesome chatting. I'm going to have to wrap it up because yes. otherwise, we're no, just I, know, I know, I know, I do apologise. No, no, no. It's been great. Um, Final time, if people don't know about your blog, where can yes. they find out about you online, blog, social, the whole lot? You can find me at uh, my website, shewhobakes.co.uk, or put She Who Bakes into either Instagram, um, Facebook, or Twitter, and you will find me. I'm on LinkedIn, but I don't check it very much, so don't look there. <laughs> uh, find all the other ones, but yeah, just She Who Bakes, and if you put She Who Bakes into Google, all stuff will come up as well. Brilliant. Britt, thank you very much indeed. Thank you for having me. <laughs>